When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. And lastly, we talked a bit about equilibrium and pressure. And we said that this is an example we use. We said that if we have two nitrogen dioxides, they can turn into one dinitrogen tetroxides. And this might be the normal condition, normal pressure. Remember, we might have a, for every two nitrogen dioxide, we have one and dinitrogen tetroxide. But then if we decrease the pressure, or actually we increase the pressure by making the volume smaller, what would happen is you would have your nitrogen dioxide turning into dinitrogen tetroxide. So all of the actual nitrogen dioxide are gone because they all turned into this. And if we do the opposite, if we decrease the pressure, if we decrease the pressure by increasing the volume, what would happen is we would have all of our, so originally we had four nitrogen dioxide molecules and two dinitrogen oxide molecules. But now, to make sure we have that equal amounts of spacing, all of our dinitrogen tetroxide molecules have turned into dinitrogen, nitrogen dioxide molecules. That's just, yeah, if the equilibrium is disturbed, that's what will happen. That's what we established in the last video. Actually, I made one too many. But why this is this important? Well, I'm going to talk about something called the Avogadro's Law. And the Avogadro's Law says that for equal, equal amount of molecules, so equal amount of molecules take up equal amount of space. Take up equal amount of space. Now you might realize that it doesn't say anything about what type of molecules, so the size matters or the mass matters. So mass and size does not matter. Mass or size is not important. That is not given in the Avogadro's law. So for example, if you were to get the molecular weight of both of these, this here would weigh about 12 for nitrogen, 14, actually it's 14 for nitrogen and 16, 32. This would be 48 grams. Roughly for this, so I might be a bit wrong. That's just out of the top of my head. And obviously this is double. So this one weighs a lot more. This one weighs almost 96. It's double the amount of the original one. And if I'm wrong with the calculation, it's just I did it quickly in my head. But the weight is different, but overall that doesn't matter. And the fact that this one is might even be bigger in size doesn't matter. Because the only thing that matters is the amount of molecules. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six molecules. And here we have one, two, three, four, four molecules. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight molecules. So when we increase the pressure by making it smaller, it went into whatever shape it could find that would decrease the amount of molecules. If we decrease the pressure, it would go into whatever shape would increase the molecules. But the fact what kind of molecules isn't important. That's not really important. And why? I'll go over why as well. And that was due to the fact that... So what I'll do now, I'll just show what quickly why. Let's say we put five of these into here, and these five will take up this amount of space. Now you might think, okay, if I, if I were to take the other five, so five of the other ones, the other five would take up more space. So let's say I'm going to take five of these because they're bigger. You might say, okay, well, it looks like they're taking up more space. But obviously with these kind of diagrams, you should realize that that's just a misrepresentation of the actual size of these. So distance between these two molecules is massive. There's so much empty space between the two molecules that it doesn't really matter how big they are because they can't ever be big enough or usually aren't big enough, especially when they're gaseous, for the size or the mass of them to really matter how much volume they take up. So there's so much empty space. Again, this obviously doesn't get that much empty space, but there's much more. So it doesn't matter if you have five of these or five of the other ones, they all take up the same amount of space. And that's important to realize that's Avogadro's law. It says that Equal amounts of molecules will take up equal amounts of space, no matter how big the molecules are or what size the molecules are. Now we actually need to do some calculations, and it says calculate the volume of given gases of substances in reactions and calculate mass of substance given gases of gaseous volumes in reactions involving gases at 100 kilo uh, pa or 25 degrees Celsius or 0 Celsius and 100 kPa. Uh, kPa. Right, so we have to do two things. We have to either calculate it at 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa or 
at 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa. Now this determines how much volume takes up. So for example, this says, okay, well here these take up this much volume. And this will tells us that at whatever all molecules, whatever they are, take up so much volume for one mole. It's per, per mole. So one mole takes up 22.71 liter of volume. And obviously the only difference between those two formulas are the temperature. So the second formula says at 25 degrees Celsius, it will take up this much volume. And so that's 25 degrees Celsius. Only difference is the actual degrees. The rest we keep constant. The pressure we keep constant. We only change the degrees. Now I'll do some quick calculations, but the most important part that you should get from this first initial part, which is that equal amounts of molecules take up equal amounts of space. That's the most important part. And we're going to use these two values to do some calculations. Before we start, we should realize we've got these equations here. These were the ones for 0 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal, and for 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascal, how much volume one mole takes up. We also have these equations. This is to calculate mass, if we have number of moles given. And this is to calculate volume, if we have number of moles given. We will be using all of these in these types of calculations. And this is the first question. So it says 2 grams of lithium is completely dissolved in hydrochloric acid. Calculate the volume of dry hydrogen gas produced at 100 kilopascal and 25 degrees Celsius. So we have to get our volume of hydrogen gas. The only thing we have given is lithium. So lithium is the only thing we've given. So first what we can do is we can get the number of moles of lithium. Remember we use this formula here and we're going to go over why we did it as well in a second. So we have given n is what we want, n is the number of moles is what we want. We have given 2 grams as the amount we have of lithium. And the molar mass, we can simply look at the periodic table. And for lithium, that's 6.94. So I'll just say 6.9 grams. And then we, what we do is to get our number of moles is we put that into a calculator. So that would be 2 divided by 6.9 gives us 2.9, about 2.9 roughly. So it's 0 0 0.29 moles. Now what we have to do next is we have to actually write a balanced formula for this equation here that we've given. That's true. You should always remember that you have to do this quite quickly, quite early on. So it's lithium. It says lithium is completely dissolved in hydrochloric acid. So lithium plus hydrochloric acid. That's the first part. And what does that do? Well, we're going to have a salt forming. That means you're going to have lithium chloride forming plus your hydrogen gas, which also says it's in the actual thing. So now we have this. Now we need to make sure it's balanced. In this case, it's not balanced. The way we can see that is we have two hydrogen here, only one on the actual reactant side. So we're going to add two in front of here. Now we have two chlorines here and one chlorine here. We have to add two in front of here. And now we have two lithiums here, so we have to add two here. Now this is just the balanced, actual balance equation. So what we do next is we know that this number of moles, so we have n is 0. Point, so lithium is 0. 0.29 moles. And remember, equal amounts will take up equal amounts of space. So if lithium is, takes up 0. 0.29 moles, we only have two, we've got two moles of lithium and we've got one mole of hydrogen. So we have half the hydrogen that we do have in terms of the mole ratio, we do have lithium. So we know that the half of it, so this divided by two, is how much moles we have in terms of hydrogen. So we've got 1.45. So we have about 1.45 moles of hydrogen. And what we can do next is we can use this formula, the volume formula, because now we have what we need. We, need, we, want, to know, we want to know the volume of hydrogen. We, N equals V divided by Vm. This is the actual equation. We have the volume, if we have the number of moles, of hydrogen, which is 0 0.4145. You have the volume, that's what we're trying to find. And we have the, the how much one mole takes up. We have that as well. We have the given here, which was at 25 degrees Celsius, which is what we're doing. At 24.79 liters per mole. So now if we put, if we change, if we rearrange that equation, if we put this to the other side, we're going to have 0 
0.145 times 24.79 equals our volume just by rearranging the actual equation. So I'll do that quickly. Um, 0 0.145 times 24.79. This will give us how much liters there are. There are 3.59 liters. Now this is actually 3.5 liters. So this these amount of moles takes up 3.59 liters, and one mole. So if you had one mole, would take up 24.79 mole liters. That makes sense. One mole takes up 24.79 liters. So if we only have 0 0.145 moles, it would only take up 3.59 liters. So less of it. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.